Hi, everyone. Today, we invited Jorge Rego to talk to us about the date picker inside a Python data app. A date picker is something that is commonly used to allow users to choose dates and interact with the dashboard app. And today, we're going to learn just about that. Hello, everyone. I'm Rodrigo. I'm a Dash community developer. And today, I'm going to teach you guys how to build a web app which uses a date picker single and a bar chart. OK. So here, uh, here's what you see in the screen is the, the web app uh, already done. OK. So we've got the date picker single right here where you pick a date and the, the bar changes. OK. So the bar graph, graph changes. So that's basically what we're going to do. OK. So let's go to the code real quick. So first things first, we gotta import some some libraries. Okay, so from date time to import date and date time. Okay, you have to import dash from dash. You have to import dash for the for the server input and output for the callbacks. Well, this is C, which stands for the dashboard components, HTML for the basic structure, callback for callbacks. We gotta import Python Express SPX for the graph, and we gotta import pandas and PD for the data frame. So uh, our data frame will be available in a, in a link that will be available for you guys in the description. Uh, I'll just copy paste right here and we'll check the, the CSV on the web. Uh, as soon as possible. So let me just go right here, pd.readcsv. So right here, uh, you guys have to copy and paste this link. Okay, so uh, this link, uh, we've got a CSV uh, with four columns. Okay, so we've got date, max temperature, mean temperature, and minimum temperature. Uh, those are temperatures from Seattle uh, from 1948 to 2016. Okay, so that's uh, that's what will be a work on the web. Okay. So let's come back right here and paste the, the link. Now we gotta instantiate our app. So app will be equals to dash underscore underscore name underscore underscore. And here we we'll start to build our app layout. Okay. So the first thing we gotta do, we gotta add the HTML div uh, so we can wrap all of our content. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're gonna add the title, so the title will be the story weather data in Seattle. Uh, and as we can see in the app, we wanted the, the the title to be in the middle, in the middle of our screen. So we gotta add some style right here. So style will be equals to text align middle on the center. So the next thing we gotta do, we gotta add the date picker symbol. Okay, so date picker symbol right here. And here we've got a few parameters. The first one is an arbitrary name for the ID. I'm gonna call it my date picker. Right. The next one is the minimum date allowed, which will be the same for the initial visible month and the date, which stands for the for the values. Okay, so uh, 1948, uh, first of January because that's where our CSV starts, all right? So that's our uh, lower value, uh, if I can say. So I'm, I'm just gonna copy it right here because our initial visible month will be equals to 1948, 1st of January, and our final value will be equals to 1948, 1st of January. Uh, so this represents what we're gonna get from the, from the callback later. But that's that's another topic. Okay, so what we're gonna add right here is the max date allowed. And the max date allowed, uh, as we can see in our CSV, it's a 2016 weather data from Seattle. So let's just put the, the last day of 2015. So it's it's safe that we, we have this data. Okay, it's to say that we have this data. So we put uh, 31 of December to, uh, from nine, uh, 2015. Sorry. Uh, so that's it for the date picker symbol. Okay. Uh, we've got an we've got an error right here. Oh, right here. Okay. So that's it for the date picker symbol. Then we're gonna just add a DCC dot graph. Okay. So in the graph we've got an empty figure that will be uh, will be updating the the callbacks. 
we got an ID which will be used to communicate with, with our colleagues. Okay, so basically that's it. Okay. Uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just uh, run the server so we can see how's it going. Okay, so if name equals name, then add dot runs. We're gonna run it with debug equals true. Alright. So now right here I'm going to Python data so you can see it uh, in our browser. Uh, then what, what we've got to do is to initiate our callbacks. So let's just open it. So here we've got our date picker. Okay, so it's working. And we've got our uh, our title and our our graph. Okay, so the, the graph is empty because we didn't create it, uh, our callbacks yet. All right? So let's continue. Uh, right here, we got to add our callback. Okay, so add, call, uh, add callback. Uh, the first thing uh, we got to search an output. So, what is our target? Our target is my graph and this figure. And the input of our callback will be the the bigger single. So, first we put the ID as usual, and then we put the the parameter that we want. In this case, is the day. Okay. So here we gotta define a function. Okay. So we'll call it a big graph and the uh, the only parameter will be the date of the date picker, so we call it date value. Uh, if date value, so if date value is not none, right? Uh, we gotta do some manipulations in the date value, so date value will be equals to date time dot uh, strip time, uh, which basically just passes uh, pass the value uh, from string to date time. So we want to pass the date value right here. Uh, and we want to pass its its format, so its uh, percentage y, which means the the whole year. Like it's not only the, the last two digits, it's uh, all of the four digits of, of the year, uh, like right here. Okay, so uh, we've got the slash the month and the day. Okay, and then we're gonna do uh, strf time, or which passes from date time to a string, okay? So we will want this percentage hashtag month slash percentage hashtag day slash percentage hashtag year, all right? So the next, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna create an, an aux uh, data frame, so we'll call it DFF. So DFF uh, is basically the DF where the date is equals to our date value, right? So uh, after we've done all the, the data frame manipulations, we gotta draft, uh, we just gotta create our our figure and return. So we we'll call our figure my bar. Okay, so my bar will, will be equals to quasi express that bar. We'll pass the DFF as the first first parameter. Uh, then we gotta pass the the y values. So the y values will be three strings, will be an array of strings, okay, a list. So the max temperature in Celsius, uh, mean temperature in Celsius, and the minimum temperature in Celsius. All right. So the next thing and the last thing for the, my bar, we gotta say what's the bar mode of all of our graph. So our bar, bar mode will be group. Uh, here we're gonna just set some layout. So the first thing we gotta do is uh, update our traces. So all we want our traces to, to change is the whole template. So the information that is shown when you put your cur your cursor uh, above the graph. Okay. So here we gotta use some CSS. So we'll uh, give it a line break. Okay percentage the y value in Celsius okay uh, and then another thing we want to do is to update the layout because we don't want the x-axis to be to be visible as you can see right here uh, it, it really doesn't matter okay because you can see when you when you hover your template uh, over the bars okay and, and here in the in the legend so we want that x-axis visible equals to false. Okay. Uh, and we will return the 
var and else like if the state value is none uh, we'll just uh, we just want to update how we are okay. so let's save it right here and go back to our screen to our browser so here you go uh, the app is working okay, so as you can see if you change the date uh, you can see different data right here so in the 15th uh, of the fourth month of 1948 the max temperature was 18 celsius uh, the mean temperature was 14 and the minimum was 10. so basically that's it okay so that's the app uh, thanks for watching i hope you you enjoyed uh, if you didn't understand uh, uh, i please you to pause the video and go back to what you didn't understand or maybe leave a comment and hope you guys enjoyed See ya.